Creativity is a skill. It's like typing with a typewriter or riding a bicycle. You can learn the skill if you learn the systematic methods of creativity that we're going to talk about here. It's very much like a combination lock. If you don't know the combination to a lock, somebody could give you the lock and you could fool around with it for hour after hour after hour and achieve nothing. But if somebody gives you the combination, then you can spin it back, forward, and back again, and the lock falls open. Creative thinking methods are very similar to that. That if you use creative thinking methods on a regular basis, what you do is you develop a whole series of combinations that enable you to open the lock that blocks your progress, that keeps obstacles in place, that stops you from achieving your maximum potential as an individual, as a manager, and as a business owner. So let's go to the board and let's talk a little bit about creativity. And let's start off talking in the very simplest terms. The first of the 21 ideas, which I think is a critical starting point, number one is what is creativity? Well, in my estimation, creativity is not painting the Sistine Chapel or great works of art or music. Creativity is simply improvement. Everything that you do that expands or improves the way things are done is a creative act. Let me say this at the beginning too, is that the more you look for ways to improve activities on a day-to-day -day basis, the more creative you become. That your creativity is a latent force that lies, if you like, deep down within the recesses of your intelligence, and you can become more creative as you place more demands on your creative capability. Every single person has what is called a line of sight. In every organization, the line of sight is what you see when you look up. It's the job you do and what is going on around you. And everybody can find ways to improve what is going on in their line of sight. Let me just say this, that success in business life is directly proportionate to the quantity of new ideas that you come up with on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. A person who comes up with a continuous stream of good ideas, or even a continuous, continuous stream of average ideas, is a person who is destined to great success in business. People who come up with no ideas or very few ideas are usually stuck where they are. So look in your line of sight. What do you see around you that may lead to improvements? In 1975, Mazda Corporation of Japan had been decimated as a result of trying to introduce the rotary engine. Their profits were down to $5 million in that year, and they introduced a suggestion program where they encouraged people in the company to give suggestions on how they could do things better, faster, cheaper, easier, newer, and so on. And the first year, they got 200,000 suggestions. And they implemented 60% of the suggestions. A total of 120,000 suggestions were implemented, and they found a very interesting thing, is that although they had a reward system for good suggestions, the major reward that people reported to them was seeing their suggestion implemented in their line of sight. The satisfaction they got from coming up with an idea and seeing it applied was the big payoff. In 1980, only five years later, Mazda Corporation had made an astonishing turnaround. Their profits were up to 95 million. The number of suggestions was running at 2 million suggestions per year, and they were still maintaining a level of implementation of 60%. Profits had increased 1,800%, and the officials of Mazda Corporation said that the primary reason for it was the suggestive suggestion system where they encouraged everybody to be innovative and be continually looking for ways to do things better. Now, as opposed to that 60% implementation, when we test the level of implementation of suggestions in American or Canadian corporations, we find that the level is about 10%. Now, if it's 10%, what does that mean? It means for every 10 suggestions that a person gives to the average corporation, nine of them are rejected. What does this do to a person if they have 90% of their suggestions rejected on an, average, on, an, on an average basis? Do you know what it does? They say, what the heck, forget it, it's not worth it. What's even worse than that is many companies encourage suggestions and then they ignore them if the suggestions are inconvenient. Now all the work that's being done in excellence today, all the work that's being done in the best corporations shows that there's a direct relationship between ideas and profitability. Between ideas and profitability. It's because of the dynamic nature of our society, because of the competitiveness, because of the rapid obsolescence of products and services, that the more and better and faster ideas that you can generate within your organization, the more likely it is that you're going to survive and thrive in the years ahead. And an organization that does not continually come up with new ideas is an organization that is doomed. So when we talk about organizations, we know that organizations 
are simply people. Organizations are simply you and the people around you. And this brings us back to what you might call the psychology of creativity. What are the factors that determine your creativity?